Hi, this is Bill for Sparky Channel. Today I'd like to answer the question, do lights in a garage need to be protected by GFCI? Earlier, I made a video about replacing a receptacle with a GFCI receptacle in a garage. I specified that it was in a garage and the box with the receptacle included a switch that controlled the light. So then I got a question as to whether that light needed to be controlled by that GFCI. So I'd like to address this question. Here we are at the 2020 NEC code and I'd like to start with article 210.12 arc fault circuit interrupter protection. A dwelling units all 120 volt single phase 15 and 20 amp branch circuits supplying outlets or devices installed in dwelling unit kitchens, family rooms, dining rooms, living rooms, parlors, libraries, dens, bedrooms, sunrooms, recreation rooms, closets, hallways, laundry areas, or similar rooms or areas shall be protected. And what I'm pointing out here is that for arc fault circuit interrupter protection, garages are not mentioned. So we can just eliminate the concern about AFCI protection for our garage lights. Here we are at Article 210.8, Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter Protection for Personnel. Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter Protection for Personnel shall be provided as required in 210.8A through F. The Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter shall be installed in a readily accessible location. We're going to go right over here to dwelling units. Okay, now we're concerned about garages in a dwelling unit. So all 125 volt through 250 volt receptacles. Now notice it says receptacles. That's very important. It doesn't say receptacles and devices or receptacles and lights. It just says receptacles installed in the locations specified in 2108A1 through A11 and supplied by single phase branch circuits rated 150 volts or less to ground shall have ground fault circuit interrupter protection for personnel. One, bathrooms. That doesn't apply to us because we're looking for lighting in garages. Two, this does apply to us because it's about garages. Garages and also accessory buildings that have a floor located at or below grade level, not intended as habitable rooms and limited to storage areas, work areas, and areas of similar use. Outdoors, crawl spaces, basements, kitchens, sinks, boathouses, bathtubs, laundry areas, indoor damp and wet locations. So those are our 11 uh, places here that you have to have GFCI. The one we're concerned about is garages. And I think the most important, well, the most important point here is receptacles. So anything having to do with a receptacle in a garage has to be protected by GFCI. Here is a picture from the 2020 NEC handbook. And this is exhibit 210.10, examples of receptacles in a garage required to have GFO protection. I think that GFO is a misprint. I think this is, this is supposed to be ground fault interruption protection, GFI. If you know differently, let me know. I've Googled it. I've looked it up in NEC definitions. I don't find GFO. I find GFI, though. So here's the photograph from the handbook. And here, this receptacle right here has to be protected by GFCI. If you have a freezer, they want you to, to protect it by GFCI. Now, this is quite controversial because you can go on vacation and this GFCI can go out and you'll have a very smelly bunch of stuff in your freezer when you get back from vacation. 
So that's, that's a little controversial. But there it is. That's the picture. Freezer plugged into GFCI. Okay, so here's a GFCI receptacle right here. And garage door opener plugged into GFCI receptacle right here. And right here, which is pertinent to our question, this light doesn't say GFCI on it. I believe that this is a receptacle and that is protected. So the light has no mention of GFCI. If that light were to be on its own circuit, or if you had a couple lights on the same circuit, it wouldn't have to be protected by GFCI. That's my interpretation. So to answer the question about my example video, where I had a GFCI receptacle and a switch in the same box, and I had a light on that same circuit, so I believe that I wired that correctly in the video. However, if that light were on its own circuit, then I believe that it wouldn't necessarily have to be controlled by GFCI. This video is part of what is currently a five part series. Number one in the series is about box fill calculations with new 2020 NEC changes in ground wire fill. Number two in the series is a quicker way to do box fill calculations. And not actually cheating, but I called it cheat mode. And number three is answering a viewer's questions about do pigtails count in the 2020 NEC calculations. Number four in the series is one that I referred to in the video. It's about replacing a receptacle with a GFCI receptacle in a busy two gang box. And number five in the series is the one you just watched about, well, does lighting in a garage need to be protected by GFCI? So I don't know if this is the last one in this series or not. We'll just have to see. Just if you got more questions, write in and let me know. I'll put a link in my video description for a playlist that will include all the videos in this series. I'll also put links in my video description for the ideal circuit breaker finder kit. Uh, and I use that outlet tester in the video. I'll put a link for the Kinepex electrical installation tool. And I'll put a link for the popular volt claw that I push the wires with. I'll put a link for the fluke voltage detector. And I'll put a link for the Fluke 117 electrician's meter. Thanks. I hope this video was helpful.